Hello, I'm Renaud from More Mountains and uh, welcome to this inventory engine tutorial. The inventory engine is a complete inventory management solution. It will allow you to create inventories and items, display the inventory contents and interact with it. It's simple to use, but will accommodate to a ton of different use cases. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you what the inventory engine is about, uh, what it can do and how you can plug it into your game. It's also important to note that it's uh, um, included by default in the Corgi engine, which is a, a platformer solution available on the Unity Asset Store. Um, so uh, maybe I'm going to start by showing you uh, the contents of this demo, uh, which is called Pixel Rogue and uh, is included in the asset by default. It contains uh, two rooms, so this one and this one. And in these rooms, there are items uh, laying around. And if I uh, walk over them, uh, I collect them and when I collect them they go into inventories so we have a bomb inventory here and if I collect uh, these ones they will go into my main inventory which I can open and close uh, using the I key on the keyboard but uh, I could also play on the gamepad and uh, and on mobile of course it, it supports everything and uh, I've collected all the items in this room and now my inventory is full. As you can see, we have uh, different kinds of objects. We have armors, we have weapons, we have coins, and we have apples. Uh, some of them um, take one slot and some of them can stack. Like for example, I can have uh, up to five apples uh, in each slot. Um, there are a few things I can do with these items. Uh, I can, for example, um, stack them and like the apples but i can also equip them uh, for example if i as you can see my, my character here is uh, dressed in green but if i equip the blue armor and uh, the axe i now have a blue character and a small axe equipped i can swap weapons and armor too and now i'm green and i have a sword i can also uh, consume items like uh, the apple for example and uh, if you look here in the console uh, it says my health has increased by five and i can you know uh, eat them all and uh, what's uh, even funnier is that i can go to another room and my inventory is uh, you know still there and i still have my sword equipped and I can collect more items and I can go back to the other room and collect even more items and uh, that's pretty much it um, so yeah that that's what the inventory engine does so what's in the asset um, we have four folders in the asset we have uh, the demo folders uh, that contain everything that make these uh, pixel rogue scenes uh, work so we have uh, two pixel rogue room scenes and two minimal one. Uh, the minimal ones, I'm just gonna like save this maybe. Um, the minimal ones are basically the same thing as the other one, but uh, they don't include any display. It's really the minimal stuff that uh, you need. So you have a rogue main inventory and you can collect stuff and it will um, go into the inventory. If you can, you can see that in the, um, the debug uh, inventory here in the inspector. Uh, so you'll also find animations for the, that small dude, uh, some prefabs, resources, uh, that's where the items are, some scripts dedicated to uh, this demo, like uh, changing levels, stuff like that, that is not really part of the inventory engine. Um, then we have uh, the inventory engine folder, which contains all the scripts, sounds and fonts, that make the inventory engine actually work. Um, basically, you wouldn't necessarily need uh, the fonts and the sounds, but uh, they're included for convenience. But of course, you can change them to use your own fonts and sounds. Um, then we have the MM data folder, which is uh, a folder that contains all the saves uh, files on disk. Um, it shouldn't be included when you when you get the asset, but it will be created every time you you save uh, a file. And then we have the MM Tools library, which is the the Mount tools that I use throughout most of my assets. 
and they include a lot of helper classes. Some of them may not be used in the inventory engine, but I suggest you just leave them like that because um, they may depend on it and they won't increase the, the build size of your game if you just leave them there. So let's see how I can create an inventory. So my goal here will be to create a, some sort of database where I can store items uh, as I collect them. I don't want to display them right now, I just want to store them. Um, in this scene we already have one, it's called Rebel Main Inventory, but I'm, I'm going to remove it and uh, create it anew. Uh, so I'm going to create uh, an empty game object. I'm going to call it the same way, Rogue Main Inventory. Um, the reason for that is that uh, items, they need to know where to go. They need to know in what inventory they're supposed to go. And by default, all of these items, they are set to go into an inventory called Rogue Main Inventory. So uh, I could either uh, set them up all again, or I could just call it like that. Now that I have my Rogue Main Inventory game object, MT, I'm going to add an inventory to it, inventory component. I want to check that checkbox, draw content in inspector, that will allow me to see uh, the contents in a user-friendly way. I can set the type, I have main or equipment, main doesn't do really anything special, it's just for collecting stuff, it's your stash. Um, Equipment is more for stuff that you can equip, as the name implies, uh, stuff like an armor, a weapon, a helmet, stuff like that. Uh, then I can also set a target transform. The target transform will be used by the engine to know where your character is in the scene and it will allow it to be able to drop items uh, when you want to get rid of them and it will drop them on the ground next to your character so it needs to know where you are. Uh, if you're using the Kogi engine, this is taken care of. But if you're not, you need to uh, select your character, so that's my adventurer here, and you drag and drop that into this field. The last thing you want to do if you're not using an inventory display, and that's my case right now, I'm, I'm just setting up that sort of dat database, um, I need to set the size of it. Uh, so that's the number of slots in my inventory that I can collect objects into. Uh, and I'm gonna say it's 20. I press enter and uh, this triggers this ugly thing. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it closed and it's just better to uh, look at the debug content here. And if I press play and, uh, oh, I forgot to, to reset my inventories. So that's something you can do by clicking here and reset all saved inventories. I press play and if I I uh, have my rogue main inventory selected I and click in the game view uh, and if I start moving on top of stuff I, I start filling my inventory and I can see the contents here. I could decide to empty a slot and I can go to uh, another room and back and if I select my main inventory again I still have my inventory contents they haven't moved and um, I can uh, I can go uh, from room to room and I can even uh, quit the game and start it again and select my stuff and it's still there. So uh, uh, the inventory comes with methods, uh, the inventory class here it comes with methods. Uh, I'm just going to open it to show it to you. So it's quite a big class, but uh, if you look at the API documentation, it will be easier to read. Um, comes with methods to add items, that, that's what the item pickers do, uh, move items, stuff like that, uh, empty inventory, uh, and you can also get, uh, for example, the quantity of an object, so uh, you could you could call, uh, in this case, um, um, get quantity apple, and it would return maybe, uh, I don't know how many I have in my inventory right now, but maybe 10. Uh, you can also know whether an inventory contains stuff or not, uh, and you can save and load and stuff like that. And, and of course, you can then call methods to use an item at a certain position in your inventory or equip it and stuff like that. Um, most of the time you won't really need to call these methods. Uh, it will be handled for you by uh, the classes we're going to see now. So we've seen how to create inventories. Now uh, let's see how you can set up items. So the inventory engine uh, for items, it uses scriptable objects to represent them and manipulate them. 
You can learn more about scriptable objects in Unity's documentation if you want, but uh, it's really not mandatory to have fun with the engine. Uh, so uh, if, we, if we look at uh, the scripts, uh, the main class inventory item, uh, it's stored into uh, the scripts folder and it looks like that. It's quite a big one. I'm gonna close the others. Um, and it contains and will define all the information of an object. So you have a name, you have a target inventory, uh, you have whether or not it's uh, usable, equipable, the quantity, stuff like that. Um, then you have methods uh, to handle the target inventory, target uh, equipment inventory, whether or not it's null, uh, methods to copy it, to spawn prefabs, and a few methods that will uh, need to be overridden in your own script. Um, that will define what happens when it's picked, uh, used, decrypted, and stuff like that. And um, that's the base class, but uh, you need to extend that. Uh, so there are examples. For example, uh, by default, you get the base item. Uh, the base item is uh, a class that simply inherits from uh, inventory item and it doesn't do anything, but uh, it already gives you collectibles. So uh, you can put that on any object and it will be able to go into the inventory you've uh, defined for it. So uh, for example, the, uh, the coin here uh, is a base item. It, it inherits from that. And it doesn't do much more about being a coin and being able to go into your inventory. Um, and that's the only one that is into the, the core inventory engine uh, part. The, the rest will be into the demos. So for example, if we go into uh, Pixel Rogue here and we go into scripts items, here we have all scriptable objects for all different uh, items. So the idea is that you will want to create a script for each type of item that you have. You won't create one for the sword and one for the axe, you'll create one for the weapons. Uh, same thing, you won't create one for the blue armor or the green armor, but just one for both. And um, so uh, in this demo, we have four different types. We have the armor item, bomb item, health bonus item, and weapon item. So that's usually when you create a, a new item or a new type of items, uh, that's why you'll start to create one script like that. So let's take a look at the weapon item. Um, what it does is, uh, it's a class, it inherits from inventory item, which makes it a scriptable object. It has um, only one public attribute, which is weapon sprite. So that's uh, the sprite that you want to display next to your character, well, at least in this demo game, that's how it works. And it overrides two methods, equip and unequip. And what we want to do is, uh, it's really simple, uh, we call the, the player uh, set weapon um, method uh, with our sprite. And this set, met set weapon method, uh, what it does is it changes the weapon sprite with the one uh, set in parameters. So um, equipping this item will instantly change the weapon sprite and, and equipping it uh, will change uh, it back to nothing or uh, if we equip another weapon it will you know override that and stuff uh, and and that's all there is um, obviously in a real game you would add uh, probably the, the damage output of the weapon and stuff like that but it's really just examples uh, we also have the health bonus item uh, which has like the, the amount of health that you want to gain back and when you use it uh, in this case as it's just a demo we uh, output uh, a debug log but uh, in real life you would probably do something like player.life uh, and you would increase its its value so these are the scriptable objects that will dictate uh, what these kinds of items do and once you've done that, once you've created these scriptable items, you can actually create items. Um, and these you need to create into a resources folder because they will be accessed at runtime. And uh, the only way Unity allows you to do that is to create them here. So you want to create these objects and these are scriptable object instances. So I have one for each of my items here. We have the apple, the armor, uh, blue and green, the axe, the bomb, coin, and sword. And um, 
as you can see, all of these depend on the script here. And uh, the armor blue and armor green both depend on armor item and uh, the axe and the sword depend on weapon item. To create a new one, it's really easy. All you have to do is uh, go right click, create more mountains, inventory engine, uh, and in this case, uh, let's say I want to create a new armor. So I'm gonna call it armor uh, yellow, for example. And uh, if I were to, to finish this item, I would need an item ID, which uh, you want to call exactly the same as uh, the instance you created. So it would be armor yellow. Um, the target inventory name. So in my case, it would be rogue main inventory. Uh, whether or not it's usable or equipable, it's an armor, so it's equipable. Uh, the item name that would be displayed, so maybe it would be the golden armor. Uh, short description, so that would be a text that uh, you know will be displayed. Uh, we'll see that later on. Description, uh, whether or not we can move and swap the object. An icon, uh, so uh, I don't have a, a, a yellow armor, but uh, you know, just select one. Uh, the prefab, so that that we are going to see just after that. Um, the properties, so I can only stack one. Uh, the class, so it's an armor. Uh, the target equipment inventory name, so that would be, uh, in my case, rogue armor inventory. I can specify sounds. Uh, maybe when this golden armor uh, is equipped, we have bells ringing or whatever. I could define that here. And uh, the armor index or all the properties of my armor, so 10 or whatever. Doesn't do anything in this demo. So anyway, um, so now I have my armor yellow here. Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna update the short description. Uh, this is our demo item. Uh, and it will be useful later on. So um, now I have my item. It inherits from uh, armor. I could create uh, an armor red, armor black, armor green, um, any kind of armor. Uh, and it's really just as simple as doing that uh, new instance thing where you go create inventory engine and you select one. Um, so now what I'm missing is a way to actually collect my new uh, golden armor, my armor yellow item here. So to do that, I need an item picker. Uh, all the items you see lying around in this demo scene are, are actually item pickers. They're not items. They're just ways uh, for the game to know that when you go into that zone, uh, you actually grab a coin or you actually grab uh, an apple. The items, you don't really see them. Uh, you'll see them once they are in your inventory. Um, so they're just pickers. Uh, so I need one for my armor yellow. I don't have a, a sprite for that, but uh, I'm just gonna go there and maybe, uh, I think that's a GUI um, element. Uh, it's really small, I'm gonna just increase its size. Okay, so it doesn't really look like a, a yellow armor, but bear with me. Um, so what I want to do uh, to create an item picker is create a collider. Uh, so I'm going to go for a box collider 2D and make it trigger. And uh, then I'm going to add a component called uh, item pick. And as you can see, it's a really simple component. Uh, I can define the quantity of the item I'm going to plug into it uh, that I collect. So it's a normal, I'm going to leave it at one, but I could say uh, when I collect it, I get a hundred golden armors. And uh, all I have to do now is um, drag and drop my uh, scriptable object instance into it, like that. And automatically uh, it displays all, all its properties. I can even uh, directly click here in the um, add golden armor to an inventory. I, I can select all my inventories. I only have one, but you get the idea. And uh, if I click here, it automatically uh, adds a golden armor into my rogue main inventory. So I could start the game with uh, a golden armor if I wanted to. Uh, but I, I'm gonna try and, and, and pick it. So I press play. I have my uh, character moving here and if I move on top of my new golden armor picker, I now have a golden armor that goes here because I think this slot was, was empty. But I'm gonna just 
um, reset all saved inventories and do it again. Yeah, uh, it goes into the first slot because I just emptied it. So now I have a, a, a golden armor, but I, I'm not able to see it because what we've done so far is just build like the, the database part, not the visual one, and that's what we're gonna see now. So just to recap uh, this item thing, because it can seem complex, uh, once you've done it once or twice, uh, you'll find it quite easy, and it's uh, the only way uh, that Unity you know, works with these things. So um, you have three things. You have uh, the scripts that will define uh, your general item classes uh, properties. So you have the armor, the bomb, as bonus weapon, what have you. Uh, you can have much more. You can inspire, uh, take inspiration from these and all of them inherit from the base class inventory item. Um, once you've done that, you need to create um, item instances, so a scriptable object instances, and that happens into the resources folder. Uh, and it's done by clicking right click create more mountains inventory engine or, or whatever you you've specified and you select one and uh, you just fill its inspector and once you've done that you need an item picker and that is done by creating an empty object uh, putting a sprite to it or a mesh whatever uh, box collider and an item picker and then you uh, set its item here so let's see how to display an inventory and interact with it. Um, I'm going to move to an ex uh, another scene, but I'm going to copy my uh, golden armor picker and I'm going to paste it into my uh, my new scene. I'm not going to save that one. So I'm in my new scene, which looks a lot like the old one I know, uh, and I'm going to paste my, my golden armor here. I'm going to reset uh, all save inventories and I'm gonna press play uh, and um, I'm gonna pick my my golden armor and if I uh, open the inventory as you can see um, I have now a golden armor and uh, as you can see this is the text uh, I wrote just a few minutes back um, and it's uh, it's really as simple as that uh, creating an item takes a few a few minutes and once you've done it uh, a few times it's it's just you, you could create a whole collection of items so in this new scene as you as as you just saw um i now have a way to open my inventory and actually see it in game and not just uh because it's it's still there it's still um into uh, inventories here i have my rogue main inventory and armor and i have more inventories actually in this scene um so that's uh, something you'll need in your scene, that's like the database, and you also have now uh, a UI part. So, uh, how does it work? I've uh, decided to put everything into a different canvas, doesn't really affect performance uh, in any noticeable way. Um, by the way, I can I can show you the, the profile of all, uh, the scene that was running, and uh, as you can see, we are usually uh, really, really, really low. We are below uh, 4,000 FPS uh, right now, so of course that scene is minimal. And uh, if you had like meshes and textures and particles, it will go higher. But uh, this was just to show you that um, the the inventory engine in itself, so the, the management of the objects, picking them, uh, using them and stuff, equipping them, doesn't cost anything. So it won't be a burden on your game. Um, so yeah, we have this inventory canvas uh, and it contains a bunch of stuff. The first thing to know is that uh, you have an inventory input manager. I've decided to put all the input, uh, put all the input stuff uh, separated, like uh, it's not using your game uh, input manager. You can do that, of course, you can uh, rewrite stuff to, to do that, but um, it's kind of autonomous. Uh, the inventory input part will only happen once you've opened uh, the inventory, and usually what you want is uh, prevent all other inputs to happen uh, while it's open. Um, and it also handles, you know, hiding, showing, stuff like that. So, um, what you need to do, um, what I would recommend is that you actually uh, copy that into your scene. 
this inventory canvas. You copy that into your UI camera or your equivalent of that, and then you modify that. Uh, will be much easier because the the whole setup is uh, is ready for you. But you can also you know rebuild it. It's just it's just components and the documentation goes over that in details. Um, so what does it contain? It contains an overlay. Uh, I'm just going to move there. Uh, so it's um, a canvas group, uh, and it's just black, and uh, it allows you to you know fade and hide uh, stuff. Uh, it's used to when when I uh, press play and open my inventory, you see the overlay here. It allows me to kind of reduce uh, the lighting of the scene so my inventory stands out. Uh, it's optional, you can get rid of it, but it's quite a common pattern in most games. Um, then we have uh, inventory displays. So inventory displays are a relatively complex structure because once you've uh, pressed play uh, and once they are set up, they will contain like slots, uh, slot objects. So these are the slot objects and they are all connected to each other so you can move using the keyboard. So it's it's really complex, but fortunately for you, um, it's automatic uh, using the inventory engine. So uh, let's let's create a new one, for example. So we'll uh, we'll base our new uh, inventory display on the rogue main inventory display that is here, um, which is responsible. I'm, I'm just going to show this canvas group, uh, which is responsible for displaying our main inventory. Um, to create one, all we need is a UI image, like that. Okay, um, and I'm gonna call it uh, test inventory display. Uh, from there, I just need to uh, add a new component called inventory display. Decide. Uh, what target inventory name uh, I want to point at. So in my case, it will be rogue main inventory display. Uh, ro well, rogue main inventory, that's the name of the actual inventory. Um, I can set uh, the number of rows and columns that I want. Uh, so for example, four rows and uh, four rows and six columns. Uh, I won't care about that. Uh, I can decide to draw uh, the empty slots or not. So uh, in this case, our main inventory, as you can see, displays the empty rows and uh, the empty slots. But uh, you could have some sort of expanding uh, inventory if you wanted to. Uh, you can define the padding, so that would be uh, like the distance between the... Uh, because in, in this case, um, this inventory, uh, the, the thing with the squares here is like part of the sprite image, the background image. So we have a padding of 20. Uh, so the, um, the slots uh, don't like uh, go over the border. Um, so that's the, the padding. And uh, you can define here the images. So uh, I have some uh, ready for you to use. Uh, you just need to bind them all. Uh, and of course you can create your own images uh, so uh, you would need to you know do that for each of these uh, you only need to do that once of course uh, I need to set the pressed one here uh, if it's that one then the disabled one etc and uh, the moved one well, I don't even have one for that so anyway um, and uh, here you can decide, uh, you know, what what kind of uh, type of image you have. Uh, you can decide to enable or disable navigation. That that will allow you to use the keyboard to go from uh, one slot to the other using, you know, the arrows. Uh, you can decide that it's that the inventory that will get the focus on start if you have much uh, more inventory than one. Uh, here you set the, the title, so that's uh, you know armor weapon inventory that you have here, and uh, my title will be test uh, inf. Uh, you can decide on a font. I'm gonna go with uh, the pixel one that is uh, provided by default with the engine. Uh, the the color of the font. I'm gonna go with 
bright red. Um, the quantity text that will be displayed to if I had more than one item. Um, I can set up in the same way and uh, I could bind inventories uh, to say that um, I can go from one to the other using uh, some key bindings. Not going to do that because uh, I would have to break everything else. And once I'm done with that, I just have this game object and it's empty, it doesn't have any children. And as you can see, to display all that, you need like a grid manager and you need a group and you need the slots and, and creating all that by hand, uh, trust me, takes ages. Uh, so here's the other set setup for you. You just click that button and ta-da, you have a working inventory. Um, could use some, some tweaking, uh, like for example, my background image is uh, not set, uh, so uh, I'm not sure how I called that pixel inventory BG, yeah, um, and uh, maybe it will require more padding, like maybe 50 all around. Other setup, yeah, that's more padding. Um, I can also change the slot size, uh, maybe these are a bit small, but uh, maybe they're a bit big, so I'm gonna reuse them and I'm gonna say the icon size in it, it should be 15 maybe, okay? And the slot margin, that's the distance between the slots, I want it to be double. So once I've done these changes, I just need to press the auto setup button and I have my new layout ready to use. Um, and uh, um, I'm gonna set the, the um, title text to be displayed at the top. So uh, that's how you decide the alignment here. Yeah, you have all these positions and you can also apply an offset. So for example, I wanted to move a bit to the right. I'm gonna say 20 here, auto setup, and it moves to the right, uh, maybe 50. There you go. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. Uh, you just need to place it uh, inside this canvas group and it will be part of uh, what is hidden and, and displayed. Or you can, you can put it outside and it will be displayed at all times. So uh, if now I press play, uh, I have my test inventory here. It's quite ugly, but uh, you get the idea. And when I grab items, they get displayed in real time. Um, so this one won't hide and, and show, but it's uh, fully interactable. I can select items and as you can see, it uh, updates the, the display item here. And uh, I could even you know, equip weapons from that and uh, equip armor and it works. There are a few things I haven't um, covered in this video, but you can go to the documentation and learn more about that. Uh, namely, that would be uh, the details of how hotbars work. Hotbars are like uh, this bomb hotbar. They're basically just uh, an extension of the inventory display with more option uh, to trigger like uh, a keyboard shortcut and stuff like that. Uh, you have the selection marker. I haven't uh, gone over that much, but that's the uh, white thing that you know follows my selection around and uh, it's really not uh, really hard to make but um, there's a documentation for that uh, what else do we have oh yeah that there's the save and load mechanism uh, it's really simple but it's just code um, basically what you need to know is that you need to trigger an event uh, called save or load uh, whenever you want to save or load your inventory in these demo scenes, um, load, so loading uh, the contents of an inventory into an actual inventory uh, happens when uh, you start the game. That's the game manager telling, uh, hey, uh, all the inventory is present here, please load your content. And uh, save is made when you go from one scene to the other using, uh, using, I need to go into my scene view uh using these change level uh, colliders here so uh, in your game you'd probably need to implement that somewhere in your code but again that's all documented um and what else uh yeah the sounds but uh, they're pretty much just fields that you you, you put audio clips in so uh, it's pretty easy
All right, um, that covers pretty much everything you need to know to get started with the inventory engine. Um, I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you next time. Bye.